So, okay, welcome, dear students. In the last class, we have discussed the NMR transition frequency nu, that is delta E divided by H is equal to Gn beta n into B0, where Gn is the nuclear G factor, Bn is the nuclear magneton, and B0 is the applied magnetic field strength. So, <coughs> uh, NMR spectroscopy can be carried out in two ways. One, by keeping B0 constant, B0 constant and varying nu, nu vary. Okay, so at a particular frequency, the transition between energy level occurs or NMR transition takes place or we can get a nuclear spin flipping takes place. So we get a, uh, a peak in the NMR spectrum. Okay, this is the one way and that is called, to, this method is called to frequency sweep. Frequency sweep. Another method, we are keeping new constant. New constant. Okay, frequency remains constant and vary the applied field strength. B0 varies. And at a particular value of field strength, the transition occurs or the nuclear spin flipping takes place. And this is called the field sweep method. Both these methods can be adopted to record the NMR spectra. Okay, anyway, in the last class, we know that uh, for a, the nuclear energy levels are equally spaced. So, all species, for example, you consider if you are taking the NMR spectroscopy of a compound, CS3, CS2, OH. We are taking proton NMR spectroscopy. That's what we are discussing about the proton NMR spectroscopy. So, only proton can undergo the NMR transition. In this hydrogen is a magnetic nuclei. Carbon is mainly carbon tall. It's carbon tall. This 99 percent is carbon is carbon tall. It is non-magnetic. Only the magnetic nuclei of carbon is C30. And that's only very small percentage. And also in the range of this frequency C30, you know, C30 is, is there in a very small amount and also it cannot occur, transition takes place in proton and NMR spectroscopy because we are using a range of frequency that frequency is not suitable for C30. So we only hydrogens can undergo NMR transition. And we studied that all hydrogens uh, in an identical environment, in the energy spacing is same, equally spaced, we can have a single line. And what is the importance of this NMR spectroscopy? What is the information we obtain from NMR spectroscopy if we get only a single line for all the hydrogen? Fortunately, it is not like that. If these, <coughs> if hydrogen is in the bare nucleus, we consider only a hydrogen atom, okay, or bare nucleus, and that's a theoretical condition. Then <coughs> we get a, a particular frequency for hydrogen. But hydrogen in the molecule is not bare, it is surrounded by electrons or other chemical environment. Therefore, the electrons near the hydrogen, for example, we consider this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and there is an electron pair in this bond, in this bond. There is a bond here, then electron pair is there. And that electron pair in the presence of applied magnetic field, if you, if you are applying B0, and this electrons undergo a spinning or rotation about a uh, 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 parallel to the applied or perpendicular to the applied magnetic field and produce its own field. It produces a field its own. Okay. And that field, actually this field is like this. Electrons in the bone circulate like in the applied magnetic field, perpendicular to the applied magnetic field and produce applied magnet, a, a field of its own. And that field is, we can draw like this. These are that field. Actually, this field is in normal case, in most of the cases, opposes to the applied magnetic field. Opposes the applied magnetic field. Therefore, the field experienced by the proton, the, new, uh, the proton is less than the applied magnetic field strength. So, in order to undergo for a, for a frequent uh, field sweep uh, spectroscopy, we are new is fixed. Okay, for if you, in the bare nucleus, the frequency required is B0. Okay, but in the molecule, especially consider the OH, OH is 
hydrogen then the field is uh, experience is less than b0 for transition never takes place so we have to increase the field so it takes place in a in a higher frequency so a higher field strength higher value of b0 okay similarly in the case of ch2 here also there is a ch bond okay for this hydrogen these two hydrogens are equal okay but this electron pairs are not like this oh group here oxygen is more electronegative atom this electron base more close to oxygen than hydrogen therefore the electron is less surrounded to hydrogen whereas in cs c is less negative this electron is more close to hydrogen therefore the induced field of this due to this electron experienced by this hydrogen is more than this oh therefore it resonates or it undergo transition at a lower sorry at a higher field strength than oh proton a similar in the case of cs3 okay all the hydrogens in a chemically different environment this cs2 is in another environment this oh is another another chemical environment this cs3 is another chemical environment but chemically different environment protons in the chemically different environment experience the, the field in the different region because of the uh, field induced by the electron surrounding it or the chemical environment surrounding it okay and that is called a chemical shift one of the very important thing in nmr spectroscopy chemical shift okay due to this chemical shift the ch3 ch2 oys all the protons resonates in a different region and that is the importance of nmr spectroscopy in nmr spectroscopy if we record the spectroscopy of nmr of cs3 cs2 oys we get three peaks like this okay so using nmr spectroscopy we can study the structure of this molecule we can study how many different protons are there in this cs3 cs2 oys and how what are their nearest chemical environment in like that, we, we know we, we can predict the structure of the compound by looking at the NMR spectroscopy. NMR spectroscopy actually is very important uh, structural tool or a uh, spectroscopic tool to different to study the structure of compound. Okay, in this way, we can get different peaks and also this uh, the area of the peak, uh, the intensity of the peak is proportional to the number of hydrogen present. For CS3 proton, the intensity will be higher. For CS2, it is it actually it is 3 is to 2 is to 1 that is the intensity of the peak in this way we can predict the number of peaks number of hydrogen number of its position its structure like that and that is called a chemical shift actually chemical shift is defined as we can define chemical shift in this way it is a difference in the absorption position of a particular proton difference in the absorption position of a particular proton due to the variation in its chemical environment from that of an isolated proton that is isolated proton we get a value of b0 okay in the case of the in the sample due to this chemical environment we get a value of a bs and this difference is called uh, actually chemical shift the, for that a particular proton but actually uh, but actually uh, for a practical sense we are not using an isolated proton or a bare proton okay that is very difficult though practically it is not not good actually we are taking actually the Bayer proton isolated proton is the primary standard that is the primary standard that is not usually done in spectroscopy we are using a secondary standard or a or a standard or reference compound for the detection of the chemical shift of the compound normally we are using a reference compound is TMS tetramethyl tetramethyl silane tetramethyl silane that is CH3, SI, CH3, CH3, CH3. We are taking this compound as a reference compound. Tetramethyl silane in proton NMR spectroscopy. In proton NMR spectroscopy, we are taking tetramethyl silane as the reference compound. Actually, we are taking tetramethyl silane as a reference compound because all the nine here, so all, all the uh, 12 hydrogens, CS3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 into 3, 12 hydrogens are chemically all are equivalent. Okay, and they are also silicon is very less electronegative, therefore they are highly shielded, shielded nuclei. Therefore, we are taking the standard tetramethyl silane. So chemical shift can be defined 
in another way like this it is a magnitude of separation okay chemical shift can be defined as it is a magnitude of separation position magnitude of separation of the absorption absorption position of a particular proton from that of a reference proton is called the chemical shift of that particular proton that is it is a difference in absorption position of a particular proton to that of the reference group that is tetramethyl silane and that is called the chemical shift of the that proton okay that is uh, chemical shift is usually denoted in a scale called a delta scale in delta scale that is a chemical shift scale delta is chemical shift that is equal to in mathematical form we can write b reference minus b sample b sample divided by b0 sorry divided by b reference into 10 raised to 6 okay that is in the field sweep experiment or field sweep method or in the frequency sweep method delta is equal to new sample new sample minus new reference divided by new reference into 10 raised to 6 okay and that is the chemical shift because uh, when uh, the field increases field increases new decrease we are taking the positive value that is why sample minus reference here here reference minus sample okay uh, both are opposite because free frequency increases then field decreases okay uh, that's why we are in the two scale b reference minus b sample by b reference in ray 6 and new sample minus new reference by new reference into 10 ray 6 it is the field sieve that is we are varying the field in this it is the frequency sieve method we are varying the frequency okay and in the uh, uh, this scale the uh, this scale we are <coughs> plotting the line from increasing decreasing from left to right that is delta is 12 here this is 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 like that actually this 0 is the value of the tms in uh, delta scale we are fixing the value for 0 for the tms actually tms photon is i already told you ch3 si si is very less electronegative therefore electron is more close to this proton therefore the cs3 proton is highly shielded proton okay highly shielded therefore its v0 will be field strength will be very high therefore it is fixes value of zero okay so when delta value increases from right to left when delta value increases from right to left delta value increases means delta value increases means field decreases that is its downfield okay in this this area is downfield that is lower field strength this area is up field that is higher field strength okay we are comparing with tms tms is given zero tms high high delta value sorry high value of field strength because in ch3 so in the tetramethyl silane si is very less electronegative therefore electrons are close to hydrogen more so it is highly shielded therefore it's a it get a high field therefore delta value zero for tetramethyl silane so it's a high field therefore the proton closest to <coughs> zero have a high field strength that is up field okay value increases means it down field actually it's opposite way when delta value increases that is down field lesser field strength <coughs> okay or lower frequency delta value high means it is higher field strength or lower frequency lower frequency means energy is higher in, in this part energy is higher in this part energy is lower lower energy is required for the transition in this part lesser energy is <coughs> higher energy is required for transition and that's the chemical shift i think you may be you might have clear this topic study well read the book very well and understand the topic very well okay thank you